thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Any place you are joining from, if you are joining from Asia, from Europe, from America, from Australia, from Biafra land, whichever part of the world you are joining from, I thank you, Alex Martins. Thank you for joining, Alex. Thank you for connecting. I appreciate you, Alex. Thank you so much for joining. Every other person that I've connected there, I thank you very much for joining, for connecting. I appreciate you. And you know the reason why I come online all day. My purpose of coming online is to encourage my fellow beer friends. To encourage you, not to discourage you, not to attack anybody, not to push out any word that is not acceptable. Just to encourage my brothers and sisters, the Biafran people, and all those who are seeking for their freedom sincerely. This is time for us to apply mental toughness. You must be mentally tough. It is a must. This time around is not optional. You must be mentally tough because we are in a stage, in a very difficult stage, a stage where you must have to apply mental toughness for you to overcome. When you see every propaganda that is going out there, the propaganda have gone to a very, a very loud stage. And the couple with the situation of the Zoological Republic, you see that so many people are falling away. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. People are, are falling away. But don't allow yourself to be deceived. You see, from the few days now, when you see the videos that are coming out from their conventional media, you no longer need to ask questions. Should we participate in the election or not? It is now becoming more clearer why we must not participate in the Zoological Republic election. It doesn't matter whom they choose. Today you are seeing more reason you must not believe anybody who is talking about any political solution, talking about the election, the so-called obedient movement and whatever. They are all false and will never stand. We have to be mentally tough. That is the only way we can be consistent in our request. Not only being consistent in our request, that is the only way we can be able to get our request. If you are not mentally tough and consistent, you can't be able to get your request. It doesn't matter how you try. You can't get it. Because you will always fall aside and play into the hand of the enemy. And let me tell you, the enemy is not relating their effort. They are trying at all times to make sure that they push out information that are false very false information, information that are not true. They will try everything possible to make sure that they cajole you into going into, into accepting their evil plans. But if you are mentally tough, you can be shaken. It doesn't matter how they try. You will be standing. You will be consistent. You will continue demanding for your freedom. The only thing that can give you and I freedom is what? Self-determination. Self-determination, outright self-determination, that is what we are looking for. Outright independence, that is what we want. We don't want any restructuring, neither do we want any resource control, nor any Igbo presidency, or any so-called president for any kind. We don't want it. And if you're one of those who is still confused, you're thinking that somehow, somewhat, that maybe something is going to work out for your favor, nothing is going to work out. Nothing, nothing whatsoever is going to work. It's going to get worse. It is going to be getting worse by day. So it doesn't matter how anybody tries. It's going to get worse. So the best you can do for yourself is to make sure you stand your ground. Demand for that which you know that will give you everlasting freedom. Not a temporary one. If you're one of those who is asking for a cheap way, a temporary freedom that maybe you have the freedom today and tomorrow you have it no more. You better think again. You've got to think again. If you're one of those who is thinking of a temporary freedom, think again. Just like the video that uh, one of the Reverend Fathers made, Reverend Father who was going astray and all of a sudden got himself back and began to talk senses. Go and watch that video very well and listen. Just try to try to meditate in everything that that Reverend Father said in that very video. 
you are going to see the reality of life. You will see reality staring at you on your face. You won't have any reason to doubt anymore. You won't have any reason to ask any unnecessary question anymore. Instead, you will have more reason to stand firm and continue to demand for your freedom. Continue to stand on that very demand. There is nothing else that can be able to set people free. The, 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 the security you are looking for, the good economy you are looking for, the unity that you are looking for, the only thing that is going to fetch you those items is what? Self-determination. Self-determination. Our Supreme Damazin Nani can have done it in a way that he was demanding for the self-determination through a referendum, not through war. He said it time without number. But what do you see today? Instead of them doing the needful, conducting the referendum peacefully and people go their separate ways, they are choosing war instead. They are bringing war to the indigenous people from all angles. They are bringing war. But are we going to fold our hands for them to smoke our life out? We can't fold our hands. That is not the best way. Because the enemy that we are up against are such that they cannot be able, they don't consider human beings, they don't have human thinking. Their thought is not that, thought, that of human. We are dealing with monsters. When you see the videos that are flying around on social media, see the way the life of people are being smoked out of them. They are intensifying on the attack on the indigenous people. They are intensifying on the attack on the African people. They are increasing on their blackmail instead of repenting. What does that tell you? It tells you that all we need now is mental toughness for us to overcome. We need that mental toughness. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying, what anybody is talking, whatever you are doing, have it at the back of your mind that you must be mental. If you are not mentally tough, they are going to break you. They are going to break you. Go and look at the propagandas you are seeing. Today now, they have started releasing other videos again when they capture somebody, either a hoodlum, a cultist, when they confront any one of them, what they're going to do is they're, they're going to try to let the person confess to be a member of ESN. That is what you see on social media flying. The killing and destruction that's happening in Biafra land, you can never, ever hear it anywhere on their conventional media. No international media reports it. They never talk about it. But the only thing you see them reporting, anytime you see a propaganda against the ESN, they will be too quick to report it, even without any investigation, to back up whatever they're saying. Even when they know that they are telling lies, there is no truth in what they are saying. Yet, they will be boldly propagating that propaganda. And people will be believing them. In order to make you calm down, they will blackmail you and cajole you into falling victim, being afraid of being a terrorist. Even when you and I know that we are not terrorists and we never be. It has never been in our system. It has never been in our life. It has never been a part of us. The whole part of the world, every place in this part of the world that knows about the Biafran people, they know that we are peaceful people. The most peaceful people you can think of, the most friendly and most peaceful in the Zulu Republic. Take it or leave it. That is the absolute truth. It is only in the southern part of Nigeria you see responsible people who can be able to manage life with their neighbors. They are willing to adapt to any system. They are willing to improve others, not only themselves. They are willing to cooperate to, with every other single person. But our northern brothers are not ready. Even though we term them brothers, they call us infidels. That's what they call us. And they are willing to take us out at any given point in time. They don't want to give a second chance. We are dealing with monsters. They have the money. They have all the system. They have all the power supporting them. In every angle, they are getting the support. But what we have, all we have is Chukwokukabiam. We have the gods of our land. We have our land, our people. And one with God is majority. That is why we are not afraid. So it doesn't matter the kind of blackmail they bring to us. It doesn't matter the kind of attack they bring to us. It doesn't matter the kind of challenge they bring to us. We will never relent in our fight. We will never give up and we will never change our demand. Consistency is the key. Remember, that is our memory verse on this very uh, page. On this very page, that's a memory verse. Consistency is the key. Be consistent in your demand. If you are consistent, of course we are going to get our demand. Nobody is going to stop it. Our Supreme Leader has come and called also to remind us 
that Biafra is a deal. It's a done deal. Biafra is a done deal. It doesn't matter what anybody sees. It doesn't matter what anybody does. It doesn't matter any propaganda you hear or you see from any place. Biafra is a done deal. And we must get Biafra. We must. We must. They try to blackmail us into into being scared. They try to display their show of force in Biafra land, bringing all manner of ammunition. Go to the media. When you see, you go to the social media, you see the kind of videos that we see. If you are not somebody who has the faith in your people, if you don't know what you're chasing, you're going to be afraid. They have, they have succeeded in cajoling so many people and so many people are scared of talking about the issue of Biafra today. That is why the so-called Messiah they are projecting to you, that is going to fight for you, today cannot come out boldly and call for the release of Mazen Nandikan. Even as of today, before I came out for this program, I saw somebody on their conventional media demanding for the release of Mazen Nandikan. Still asking a question, I say, what did Mazen Nandikan do? Every other person is asking this question. But why is it that this man who they call a Messiah, Peter Obi, cannot open his mouth and demand for the release of Mazen Nandikan? Why is he so scared? So scared that he cannot open his mouth and demand for the release of Mazen Nandikan? What has Mazen Nandikan done? Mazen Nandekano is not a terrorist. He has not committed any crime. No courts all over the world have committed him. No court have committed him. He spent more than a decade in the United Kingdom preaching. Preaching the gospel of peace, gospel of unity, preaching the gospel of security, gospel of sanity to the Zoological Republic. But they refuse it. They reject his gospel. Instead, they came against him with all manner of ammunition, all manner of weapon. They came against him with all manner of propaganda. But is, did he stop? He never stopped. Because he's mentally tough. His mental toughness gave him the level he is today. And you can see that Mazen Nandekano is being celebrated all over the world. Take it or leave it. Mazen Nandekano has become a household name. That you cannot talk of justice today without mentioning Mazen Nandekano in the Zoological Republic. He has exposed all their evil. He has exposed them and they can't hide anymore. And the same thing is what we're going to do. That foundation that he has laid is what we're standing on. And I thank Chukwu Kukabiyama, who gave us another spokesperson in the person of our brother Simon Epa. Simon Epa has been doing a great job with all the attack from the enemies, all the attack from people who are clueless and have nothing to offer. So he's still standing firm and strong. And everything he says, every demand he makes, after blackmailing him and saying all manner of nonsense, they will come back. They will fall back to base. When he was supporting the seat at home, supporting the seat at home, demanding that the seat at home was hold, people called him name, people blackmailed him, people gave him a of name, but he stood his ground. And today you see, that seat at home is the strongest pillar that we have to make our voice heard. The strongest weapon that we have, and it's still going on. Still going on. And we are not relenting in our effort. Today he has come again to make a call. He has made a clarion call to every Biafran that it is time to defend our land. The time for us to defend our land. And some people are still gossiping. Because our brother Simon Epa came out and mentioned that people, able Biafran, 50 men should come and sponsor the liberation of Biafra. And he gave a time frame. All hell break loose. Some cowards, some ignorant people, some people who are mentally poor, they begin to cry. They begin to preach their propaganda. They begin to preach their lies. What is their problem? They are only scared and worried because it was Simon that said it. But they will be there watching. They will be there blackmailing. They will be there gossiping without any strategy or plan whatsoever. You don't want to support somebody that has the plan and you don't have a plan. What do you want? You are only an agent of destruction and distraction. But are we going to stop? Of course we cannot stop. And that is why I'm talking about mental toughness. you got to be mentally tough. The same way Mazin Nandekano is mentally tough. The same way our brother Simon Epan is mentally tough. Against all propaganda, all blackmail, you see him standing firm and strong. He doesn't relate his effort. He is fighting in all angle, fighting day and night. Blackmail him today, the next minute he's still online talking. 
call him names, call him a criminal, call him whatever. The next minute he's still online talking. That is the mental toughness we need. Not when they blackmail you a few minutes and you run away from the struggle and you begin to say something different altogether. A simple blackmail, you say you're angry. You see some people coming online to say, I'm not talking again. Why I'm not talking again is because how things are, things are not working well. You are not talking again because you have been blackmailed. You are not talking again because you are pushed. That means you don't know what you are doing. You must have to be mentally tough if you want your freedom. It doesn't come cheap. Freedom comes with sacrifice. People have given their life for this freedom we are talking about. You are crying of blackmail, but people have given their life. Some people have been killed because of your freedom. Some people have no life anymore because of your freedom. Some people have sacrificed everything in their life because of your freedom. And you, just because of your blackmail, you are complaining. You say you're not going to broadcast anymore. You say you're not going to come online anymore. Well, just watch and see. Just ask yourself, does it really worth it? Does it really worth it? When there is somebody already who is giving, putting his life on the line. Somebody is already putting his life on the line for you. Some people have already been lowered to the grave because of this same freedom. But you, just a black male, you are running helter skelter. You are running helter skelter. It is a shame. But let me tell you, the stage that the struggle is now, it is no longer a time for you to run around. If you know any place you're going to participate, this is time to come out. Just as our brother Simon Echo had made a call, if you know you are one of those 50 men, I know beer friends are rich. Beer friends are rich. We have a lot of billionaires. People who can give more than that, they are there. But so many of them, they prefer where they will be clapping for them and be celebrating them. It is better for Biafra land to celebrate you forever than for people to celebrate you for a minute and you are gone. If you want to be celebrated for the rest of your life, this is time you have to volunteer yourself. Come out and sponsor. Be among the 50 men. Don't be among those who, those cowards who are talking rubbish and talking trash. Some of them out of their poverty mentality, when you hear about $10,000 per month, you feel it's an impossible mission. It is a very possible mission. There are so many Biafrans, millions of Biafrans who can be able to afford that. But we need only 50 men. Call Simon Epa or call the Umada. Get in touch with them. If you cannot be able to reach up that, if there's another stage you can be, there's another 1,000 group men. If you can join the 1,000 men, call the Umada. Register. Accountability is sure. I know that is the fear of uh, so many people because of what has happened in the past. But I can tell you today, at least we have a face. We know people we are dealing with. In the past, you see people, we only hear their voice. They come and talk. You can never see their picture. You don't know whom they are. They only see them on the background. But today, at least we know the people we are dealing with. If anything happens, you know whom to hold. If anything goes wrong, you can probably confront Simon Epa. If anything happens, you can confront Madame Azuka. At least we know Madame Azuka. And we know Simon Epa. It is no longer a time where you hide under the hide under your phone and begin to claim to be a spokesperson or you claim to be working for IPOB or doing one thing or the other. There is no time to hide. If you don't have your picture, if you're not bold enough to show your face, fuck off. If you're not bold enough to show your face, just get out of the way. Get out of the way and let the people who are ready to fight for their freedom, people who want to stick their neck, let them come out. Because the freedom we are talking about is not a child's play. It comes with responsibility. So if you are not ready to take responsible of whatever is happening or whatever post you are being given, so why must you be there uh, disturbing people and trying to be an obstacle to others? So my fellow beer friends, the time has come. In the past, we have been asking when, 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 when. When, when, when. That time has come. A time for action. A call for action. Every single one of us have to put our hand on deck, come out in whichever way you know you can, whichever role you know you can play. Those who are born for this mission, just as Mazen Nanika have been saying, Mazen Nanika made that call before he was taken away among us. Remember when Mazen Nanika came online and he cried? He was crying, where are the men? Are there no longer men in Biafra land? Mazen Nanika was crying for 100 men alone. He said, if I have 100 men, I can match. 
the rest can come along later. He said it. He wasn't missing word. He said 100 men. As soon as we have 100 men that we can match, the rest people can come later. And he wasn't missing word about it. Mazinan kind of cried. The last day he made that book, he cried and cried. He said he has been saying that in the secret. He has been crying about that in the secret. He can no longer say it in the secret. He came in the open on a live program. He began to talk and call people to please come out. Those who are born for the mission. Those who are willing to pay the sacrifice. Those who know that they were born to restore our, our land Biafra. Let me tell you, the responsibility of the restoration of Biafra is on our shoulders. But it is not every one of us that will participate. There are those who are mapped out to participate. If you are one of those people, stop hiding. Come out. Stop hiding. And if you think blackmail is chasing you away, that means you are not ready. It doesn't matter the amount of blackmail. It doesn't matter the amount of propaganda. It doesn't matter the amount of force that they are using on you. Or propaganda. If you are born for the mission, you're not going to look back. Of course, you're going to show off. You're going to show up. But if you're not born for the mission, there's no problem. Don't be a distraction. If you are not born for the mission, or maybe you have played your role and you have nothing in your brains anymore, I say it. Step aside. Step aside and let those who are born for the mission take up the mission and give us Biafra. The time is now. Mazin Nankan made that call before he was kidnapped. And today, our brother Simon Epa is making the same call. That same call. That is why I tell you that the only man that is following the full step of Mazin Nankan, two to two, the only man that is building on the foundation of Mazin Nandekano is Simon Epa. Take it or leave it. If you like, believe it. If you don't like, don't believe it. That's your business. But that is the truth. If you are sincere to yourself, go and check. Since Mazin Nandekano was kidnapped from Kenya, from the very time Mazin Nandekano was kidnapped up to this moment, who is the person fighting for you and I? Who is the person that comes out to speak when the Biafran people are being killed? As the military is invading Biafra land as we are speaking, what do they do? Go and check all those people who claim to be following Mazin Nandekano. They are busy demonizing Simon Epa. Go to their platform. What they are busy. They are busy distracting Simon Epa. They are busy attacking Simon. They are busy. Even they are the ones today calling Simon Epa a terrorist. They are busy demonizing the truck. Forgetting that whenever you call Simon a, a terrorist, you are actually calling Mazin Nandekano a terrorist. Each time you open your dirty mouth and you call Simon Epa a terrorist, you attach any crime to him, you are actually demonizing Mazin Nandekan. That is what they are doing. Because even the full and the ginger with themselves, they know that Simon Epa is a full-time disciple of Mazin Nandekan. They know. And Sorok knows that Simon Epa is the only man that is holding the flag for Mazin Nandekan. So whatever you are doing against him, you are actually fighting against Mazen Nandekan and his release. That is what they are doing. That's what they are doing. There is no truth about it. But I thank Chukwoku Kabiyama that he has separated the chaff from the weed already. He has separated the chaff from the weed. So it doesn't matter what anybody is saying. It doesn't matter the blackmail they are bringing. Today, we know those who are for the struggle and those who are not for the struggle. We know those who are sincerely fighting and those who are the Nzama people we've been talking about for a very long time. Each time you hear Abra Simon Epa talk about the Nzama people, Nzama people. It is not just a, a say, but it's a reality. Today, because the money is no longer flowing on their side, they come online, all they talk about, some of them, all they talk about is money, 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 money. They begin to talk about money, money, money. But talk about the real thing that matters. Challenge the caliphate and give some exposition and tell us what is happening. They will not. Biafrans will be killed. There is no movement to, to at least say a word about the killings. Already you know that the politicians cannot stand for you. They cannot speak for you. They don't care if you live or you die. They give no damn about you. The only man that is standing ground, speaking up for you and I, you are demonizing him. You are fighting him. You are trying to make sure that you change the situation. You try to make sure you demonize him and put him out of line because of your envy and jealousy not because he's not doing the right thing not because he's not doing the right thing but if you are mentally okay what you should have done is that when you see the mental capacity of somebody who is better than you every one of us saw when Mazin Nanakano told us about the new dimension that Simon Epa was bringing when Mazin Nanakano talked about the new dimension none of us knew that today will come 
When Mazen Nanikan was talking about the new dimension, none of us knew that today we come. We didn't know. But Mazen Nandekan, as I call him, our spiritual leader, our supreme leader and spiritual leader, he sees things when before it happens. And he speaks about it and he says it. It's left for you to digest it and keep it in your heart. Mazen Nandekan, first of all, he called Simon Epa, Machineke. That is only one Chineke that will do what Simon Epa is doing. Even when Simon Epa has not joined the IPOB. Secondly, he came out again and he said that Simon Epa is bringing a new dimension to the struggle. And yet, some people who claim to be close to Mazen Nanekano, instead of being happy and embrace that new dimension, instead of you embracing that new dimension, or learn from him, there's no, no point in learning. When you see somebody who knows better than you, what you have to do is to learn. Improve yourself. Learn and improve yourself. Tomorrow you might be better than the person you learned from. Envy and jealousy could not allow them to learn. Instead, they began to attack him from all angles. Begin to attack him from all corners. But what did your attack do? Instead of your attack bringing him down, your attack continued to raise him up. Because whom Chuku Okabem have raised up, you can't bring him or her down. It doesn't matter how you try. Whoever Chuku Okabem have raised up, you can't bring him or her down. And that is the reality of life. Even when they try to bring him down, at the end of the day, they ended up raising him up. They thought they were bringing him down, but they ended up raising him up. They ended up lifting him. Each time you bring attack against Master Simon Epa, you, you, you find out that you are actually raising him up instead of bringing him down. It is not by his own work, not because he's too smart, not because he's, uh, anything, uh, he's so special, no, but because he took up the responsibility when it was time for him to do so. He's sincere. As long as I've seen, as far as I have seen so far, I don't know of tomorrow, but as he stands today, he still remains the only man who is standing his ground and saying things with this, without missing words. He's still the only man who is setting the record straight. He's still the only man who is following the step of Mazen Nandikan. Every other person you see there, they are just there trying to be there for being sick. They are trying, they, they are just trying to claim whatever, what they are not. They are trying, they are just trying to be one thing or another. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they do. What is written is written. And just like Mazen Nanakano said in the court, that Biafra will definitely come. No matter what you do, if you succeed in taking Simon Epa today out, somebody else is going to spring up, and that person will lead the race. But I don't see you succeeding in taking Simon Epa out. It doesn't matter what you do, because he has a special assignment. And just like Mazen Nanakano, he is following the instruction given to him. Not just by man. Not just by man, but by Chukwu Kukabeba himself. That is why when he used the language autopilot, <laughs> when he said that word autopilot, autopilot is deeper than you know. Autopilot is not just an organization. It is not just an organization. Even when he mentioned it, he didn't mention it as if he's a group or a, an organization. It was an advice he gave. It was an advice that he gave as a vision. But all of a sudden, that autopilot today have taken over. And when you hear autopilot, what should come at, you, at the back of your mind is Chukwu Kukabeyama in charge. That is exactly what it means. When you hear autopilot, what should come at the back of your mind is Chukwu Kukabeyama in charge. I'm not a man. Nobody's in charge of it. Tomorrow Chukwu Kukabeyama can possess you. When Chukwu Kukabeyama possess you and give you an assignment, you go into autopilot. You become an autopilot yourself. You begin to operate on your own without anybody telling you what to do. That is what is happening. And today you see the unification of all the Biafran people, all the people that have been possessed by that spirit. It doesn't matter the name you call yourself. It doesn't matter the title you call yourself. It doesn't matter the area you belong. It doesn't matter who you support. If that spirit is, has possessed you, you have to come out and join the movement to restore Biafra. And the time is now. The restoration of Biafra is going to happen. If you are still one of those, if you are from the southern part of Nigeria, and you are one of those who is still talking about uh, uh, election, who is thinking that somehow, somehow, that the Messiah is going to come to give you whatever, you better go and sleep. For the few videos that came out a few days ago, go and watch those videos. I posted most of them on my platform. Go and watch the interview that was granted to Buba Galadima in Arise Television. Go and listen to what Buba Galadima said. Then you go and listen to the interview that was granted to Kwankwaso. 
when you listen to these interviews, then come back and listen to the message that the Reverend Father gave. That Reverend Father that almost lost it before he got himself back. Go and when you listen to this straight information, then you will know where you stand. You will know that the only way, the only way as it stands today, is what? Self-determination. That everything you are hearing, whatever people is telling you, anything they are telling you, any propaganda you are hearing from any corner, from any angle, we don't stand. It's just a deceit. There is no Messiah anywhere that is going to come to give you a better nation. Are yet to wake up from your slumber or your sleep and get the point that we are exiting Nigeria. Exiting Nigeria is not going to come from the platter of Godi plate. You have to sacrifice for it. And we are ready to sacrifice everything, including you. If you come and stand on the way of freedom. So you need to know how serious we are. We are damn serious. Some of you are not getting it. You think we are here to, to make to build political movement? We are here for freedom. Freedom come with price. Okay? The only thing you can do is to comment on social media. Don't ever stand on the way of Biafra freedom. We crush you. Their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold all of Africa down. <laughs> Hey, hey, freedom fighting, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am a Nam Kano. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you are not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. <laughs> everywhere. We must continue.